I'm Bob Falk. And I'm Michael McCann. This is the first in a series of videos about positive change and how it can help companies achieve success. In this first installment, we'll show you what positive change is, how and why it works. We'll help you decide whether or not you and your company might benefit from it. In business, change is inevitable. Things go wrong and they have to be fixed. The market shifts and you have to adapt. The most common approach to change was to figure out what was causing the problem, a process called root cause analysis, and create a plan of action to eliminate it. But when you apply this to people, a root cause analysis feels like a root canal. Positive change takes a different approach. Instead of focusing mostly on the problem, the positive change process helps an organization focus 90% of the time on the positive. One of our most powerful tools are the positive change questions. First question is, what's the goal? So define a clear and compelling goal. The second question is, what works? This is to find out what you're already doing that's getting you toward that goal. Third question is, what else? Here, we brainstorm new ways that build on what's working and will help you reach your goal. Here's an example. Your boss calls a meeting to announce that the company's having problems. There are going to be changes made to address them. What's your reaction? Initial reaction is, oh my god, what did I do wrong? Do I need to pack up a box? Um, Am I part of the changes? Exactly. For most people, an announcement that change is coming to the workplace brings on a flood of anxiety and negative feelings, no matter how hard one tries to convince oneself that things will be fine. To help explain why, we're going to talk about two really important characters that live in our brain, the thinker and the caveman. The thinker brings clarity, long-term thinking, consequential thinking, and logic to your decision making. He resides in your prefrontal cortex, the most highly evolved part of your brain. The caveman is a different story. He's all about passion, emotion, survival. He resides in the brainstem and the limbic system. He's brought to us courtesy of stress. Hormones like adrenaline and cortisol are triggered whenever we feel stressed or threatened. Thinking becomes rigid, viewpoint is restricted, creativity levels drop. That's because the caveman knows of only three options when his survival is threatened. The three F's, fight, flight, or freeze. Trigger the wrong kinds of responses and you'll be stuck trying to implement change with a room full of frightened, combative, dysfunctional cavemen. The good news is that with positive change techniques, the passionate side of the caveman is activated. Excitement for the challenge, enjoying that feeling of mastery, and the desire to make a positive difference. For successful, sustainable change to occur, we must engage both the thinker and the caveman. We all have an inner movie playing in our minds, complete with a soundtrack. On our inner movies, we view memories of the past, our successes, things we wish we'd said. We also view imaginings of the future, what might happen and how to prepare for it. The problem is, the caveman can't tell the difference between the inner movie and reality. We have to influence people's inner movies so the caveman is excited and the thinker can see the logic that it makes sense. This type of motivation is partly done by concentrating on what's going right and how it can be expanded upon and spread throughout the organization. Positive change increases your greatness. It also builds employee confidence and sense of worth. And by creating a positive inner movie, you put the caveman at ease so the thinker can bring all that good prefrontal cortex horsepower to the change process.
Have you ever worked in a group where there was a lot of negative energy? What was that like? It's poisonous. Destructive. Couldn't get anything done. It was frustrating. It's to the point of, you know, I had to leave the company. There was a study done by Losada and Heafy to find out if the ratio of positive to negative statements within a team correlated with its performance. They wanted to find out what is the right balance. What they found was that with low performing teams, the ratio was one positive for every three negative statements. Medium performing teams had two positive for every one negative. That's six times as much positivity as the low performing teams. And high performing teams ranged from six positive to one negative all the way up to 11 to 1. But you can have too much of a good thing. Groups that had greater than an 11 to 1 ratio of positive to negative calcified and were less effective than ones that had at least some critical feedback. What we encourage our clients to shoot for is a 10 to 1 ratio, 10 times as much positive as negative. So that means 10% of the time you're looking at the hard truth. You have to look at that. But then you get off the negative and move into positive territory. What are we already doing successfully? What else do we have to accomplish to get where we want to be? What do you see when you look at this photo? Every time we ask our clients this question, we get these two answers. 15 cookies, woohoo, look at the cookies. The other answer, hey, there's a cookie missing. Notice how different the feeling from those two equally accurate statements are. Those who see 15 cookies tend to feel excited, hungry, and eager for more. For those that see the missing cookie, they tend to wonder, who took the cookie? Where'd the cookie go? I'm deprived of a cookie. These two ways of looking at the same scene create different movies in our heads. One of excitement, one of fear and suspicion. So we're going to talk about how you can purposely frame the way you're talking or reframe it so that you motivate people in a way that engages them rather than sets them off. Here's an example. Your company wants to reduce its wasted time and materials. So you tell your people you want them to reduce waste by 10%. The result? People feel blamed and stuck in a hole they have to dig their way out of. You're wasting money. You're creating the waste. No, you're creating the waste. The caveman starts swinging his club. Try reframing it in a positive way. How can we increase sustainable throughput by 10%? This eliminates the finger pointing and gets everyone working together in a positive direction. Here's another example. Your organization is having interdepartmental communication issues. So you ask your departments to break down silos and stop territorialism which stirs up even more blame and resentment. Instead, focus on building collaboration bridges or creating ways of increasing strategic level decision making. By reframing in a positive way, you've just gone from blame game to game change. Okay, we've defined positive change, shown you how it works, and demonstrated some of the techniques we use to bring positive change to our clients. The million dollar question is, can positive change help make your organization more successful? We can't answer that question for you, but here are some folks who've had similar questions. I think one of the surprises for me with the process was the speed at which we were able to accomplish what we did. It really brought together all the ideas that all the individual stakeholders had in order to make a difference. The positive change focus, it was so beneficial because instead of dwelling on all the things we did wrong, that for the first time we really had this positive focus on, on where we could go, where we needed to go, where we have to go. For more about positive change and the ways it can help your business or organization achieve its goals, visit our website at www.matchboxgroup.com. 
Our inspiring tools page has free resources that can help you make the positive change you're looking for. Or email us at info at matchboxgroup.com. Mm -hmm.